Hey folks, here are OS Reviews. You're watching our video first look and a quick review of the YG300 Mini LED Projector. By mini, I mean it's about the same footprint as a small Pico unit, which is indeed tiny and easy to travel with. However, that means that the lumen output is also not as impressive as a full-blown regular projector, since this is likely a fraction of its size. It's also quite inexpensive, and you can find it on Amazon for only $42 with free shipping. In terms of the specifications, it allows you know, the unit to be very energy efficient, and you can actually connect it to a regular power bank. However, since the LED bulb is so energy efficient, again, you have to use this in lowly lit environments or in the dark. If you're in a bright situation, it's not going to work quite as well. It makes a decent choice for on-the-go presentations, for some quick movie watching or video clips to share with friends and family, and it's, again, easy to travel with and can project uh, images up to 60 inches. And that's the optimal size if you are you know, getting the most in-focus picture. If you want a larger size, then you might have to look elsewhere for a different model. Other specifications include, again, that 400 lumen output, and a little bit on the smaller side of the spectrum, a native resolution of 320 by 240, even though it supports up to 1080p video input by means of an HDMI port, so, you know, it's not going to be the clearest image, but again, this is a fraction of the cost of a much more expensive full-blown unit. So you can see some basic info on the sides here. It supports a few languages. It also has a USB port, so you can just plug in some media, and it can play that back directly uh, without you know, inserting a computer or plugging into a phone or something. So there's some quick specs that you can find on the unit. Uh, the design here is fairly cute and uh, eye-catching. It seems like something that's made out of Lego blocks. Um, so maybe also a good gift idea, maybe for kids or for college students if they want to have a very quick projector to put into their dorm and they're limited on space. Inside the packaging, there's access just to the projector unit itself, which we'll take a closer look at in a second. There's also a quick user guide that's documented fairly well and tells you how to set it up in multiple languages, how to connect it using HDMI to a computer, a tablet, or a smartphone. And then there's also a remote control, which uh, takes a AAA battery, which we'll also explore a bit more in a second. And there's also the proprietary charging cable. The cable length is a little bit short, and there's also an adapter which you can plug in to have access to a traditional RGB connector for an older analog style DVD player or older computer of sorts. So taking a look at the remote control first, uh, despite the fact that this is a low cost projector unit, you can see that the design here is actually pretty modern. Um, it seems like something that you'll find on a Android TV box, in fact. It's an infrared remote, which means it has to be in a direct line of sight with the projector unit. So if you block it or if you're pointing it at the other direction, it's not going to work. However, the controls themselves are fairly intuitive and well thought out. You can skip track, you can play pause, you can power the projector on, and also select through the menus up, down, left, and right. All these keys are fairly tactile and responsive, and they're easy to access and control. So again, on the back here, you have access to the battery compartment, and that takes two AAA batteries which are not included. So taking a look at the design of the projector next, again, it's a very cute projector, and for under 50 bucks, it actually is built better than I originally thought it would be. It's uh, actually fairly solid, and there's no creaking at the seams when you tug at the unit. On the side, there's access to the power input. There's a full-size HDMI port, a USB port, so you can pop in a thumb drive loaded with movies or um, songs. It can play it back just like a dedicated MP4 player, so there's a very very light operating system built on here, um, even though it's not running on Android. There's also a micro SD card slot that serves the same purpose as the USB port. You can pop in a memory card loaded with files and it will read that back just fine. The AV input 3.5 millimeter port for plugging in external speaker or headphones. There is a built-in speaker on here, but by judging by the size of the unit, which is tiny, you can guess that it's gonna be a little tinny and not as powerful as your own speakers. There's also a micro USB port so you can plug this into a standard cable and then uh, use a power bank uh, when on the go for providing some power, which is uh, again a pretty cool feature, something I haven't seen before on a power on a projector, um, even one that's this size. On the back, there's even a small tripod mount, so you can attach this to a tripod for an elevated angle when you're projecting on the go. There's also rubber feet that prevents the unit from sliding around when you put it onto a surface or a desk, and uh, the front here also serves as the speaker. There is the tiny projector lens, which can also be focused just by manually adjusting the sides here. And then the last thing that you'll find in the design is the very front, which offers controls for the power, for going left and right through the menus, as well as uh, selecting things and selecting the input source uh, for the various ports. 
So here's what the projector looks like. I have a virtual screen size of about 30 inches and we are in a moderately lit environment. There's a little bit of light leaking out through the curtains, but the main lights in this room are already off. And you can see the image is definitely visible, but it's a little bit on the dim side of the spectrum. Colors are a little bit muted, and if we zoom all the way in, we definitely see the presence of a bit of pixelation. So it's by no means a crazy Quad HD or 1080p projector, but for images and for watching videos, as long as you're not reading into too much text, it does a reasonable job. The light operating system of the projector is simple. It's easy to navigate, and it's what you see if you don't have an HDMI cable connected for mirroring content from a computer or a smartphone. You can see that you can navigate between movies or video files, Files, music files, photos, and text that's loaded up onto an SD card or a USB thumb drive. You can use the control here to easily navigate between the tabs, and for the most part, it's pretty swift and responsive. So for movies, it's going to play back MP MP4, um, AVI files uh, encoded up to 1080p without any problems. And it supports uh, SD cards up to 32 gigabytes in our testing. Same thing for video, for uh, photos, it supports JPEG images and it gives you a very basic file uh, manager that uh, works without any issues. Same thing for music, it plays back music decently on the mono speaker located at the front of the projector. It gets reasonably loud, but again, it's a little bit tinny. And we'll show you guys that in a quick video clip next. And finally, text is very simple. It just gives you basic options for maybe a bit of an ebook reading or some presentations uh, for some basic documents. So tapping on the menu here, we can look at something, some things like the uh, resolution. And what's kind of interesting about this projector is the aspect ratio. You can see it's four by three as as opposed to 16 by 9 or a widescreen view, which is what we typically see on these low-cost projectors. This is closer to the size you have on an iPad or the same dimensions, which makes it more ideal for document viewing and for browsing the web, mirroring content on a computer than media consumption per se. We can also change the color temperature. There's some additional stuff that we can set up, including the sound, uh, a time that we can set up, and there's also settings for power um, as well as a language setup. So it's pretty intuitive and easy to use and uh, all the controls are pretty well thought out. We're now connected to a Chromebook and it's pretty simple. There are no real rendering issues that can mirror the display or extend the screen if you use it as a secondary setup. And the same thing goes with the Windows 10 computer and an Android tablet that we tested it with. Using the HDMI port, we had no real problems with connecting and mirroring content. Here's a web page in the New York Times being displayed. You can see that text is hard to read unless we zoom all the way in. But pictures, on the other hand, are fairly accurate. Uh, they can definitely be seen. The contrast seems pretty good. The temperature seems fairly accurate and can be recalibrated if you want to through the settings. So again, this is probably best suited for um, purposes where you view back media content as opposed to read too much text. So here we have a video loaded up as a quick demo on uh, YouTube. This one retails for $175, a and little bit pricey, but also competitive with other Android the projectors moment. on the market. So it has a full operating system embedded inside, although you can also mirror content from a smartphone or the remote isn't going to be the best to navigate with if you are always navigating through hyperlinks on the web browser. For that, I do recommend that you plug in a mouse using the... So from that quick audio clip, you can definitely hear the audio playing back in the, uh, in the projector. If you're watching back a few movies or if you're listening to a few songs, it's not the worst speaker that we've tested on a projector, but it definitely is tinny. It gets quite loud though, so we would recommend plugging in your own pair of speakers for a more hands listening experience. You can see here that the takeaway is that for video watching, it's not a bad projector at all. Content is definitely watchable, and uh, as long as you have your expectations modest, it makes for a decent uh, viewing experience experience. And um, I would say that for watching videos and for images, it definitely is a, a pretty good value for under 45 bucks. However, if you're looking for a projector for viewing back text, images, or for giving presentations that often includes, let's see, uh, lengthy documents, then this is not going to be the ideal candidate. So you can check out more details in our upcoming written review, but for now this has been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. This has been our video first look and a quick review at one of the smallest LED projectors currently on the market.